Worcester is a town which has experienced sweeping changes many times before, both in its social fabric and in the buildings themselves. It's not just the archaeologists who find the debris of past generations under their feet. You only have to look at some of the buildings which stand there today to see how building materials can be used again and again. For instance, there's this lovely little church in Trinity Square. That's medieval stonework, but it's speckled with Roman tiles. More than one church I found had an interesting story. Up the hill, nestling under the great Victorian barracks, was something very different. Now here's a building with a very interesting story, and it's proved to be very adaptable as well, because Florence Nightingale was offered it as a hospital for the troops. But at that time, she was very busy making sweeping changes in the way that the army was nursed. So she said, no, this building's too open, like a church, whereas a, a hospital should be divided so that the men could be nursed in separate rooms or wards. And so a church it became, because the conscious and garrison were looking for a church and agreed to take this on temporarily. And it's been here ever since. The army has been here a long time too. Colchester has been a garrison town since the Romans were here, but the present barracks began to grow when the jewels were still shining in the British crown. Now it's the headquarters of Eastern District, which means that the army from the Thames to the Humber is run from Colchester. That looks like a searchlight belonging to the Territorials going home after its 3,000 mile service. With up to 4,000 men based here, you'd expect the military to have some impact on the town. Well, they have, because whenever the army has grown or changed, Colchester has grown with them. The history of Colchester is, in a very small way, a history of England. And so the people of Colchester have learned to grow and change and adapt as the town's history has unfolded itself. Colchester is a growing town. And it's the children of today who will make tomorrow's history. Perhaps that's why Colchester boasts not only a university, but also a thriving technical college, the Colchester Institute. It was here, among the young students, that I found one of the country's best music schools. Upstairs is a cacophony of rehearsal rooms. You can hear everything from a triangle to a trumpet up here. It may sound a bit messy to the unaccustomed ear, but I know from past experience that this is where the hard graft goes on. These young people are working so that one day they might bring us flocking to the concert halls to hear their particular music. What's exciting is that they include every kind of music. There's one man who has a special association with the music school here. He's a pianist who's seen more changes of musical fashion than there are octaves on the keyboard. And we still love his music. Fernando, Ricardo, Alberto, Semprini. Albert, we first met back in Milan in 1945. And you were playing the piano for Eve Beck, and I was in a small group accompanying her. And of course, um, two of your span in the business, you, you've done all sorts of things. You did a, a long program, 25 years of, of, of serenade, didn't you? 25, yes. Can, can you sort of pin down what it is about you that appeals to the public? I really don't know, but I try to be sincere in everything. You know, once you go on the platform or the stage, the lights turn on you, you can't fool anybody. You become transparent and they can see right through you. So it is sincerity, the, the actor. And of course, now you've decided to stop playing and uh, you've given all your music here to the Institute. Yes. Why have you done that? Well, I wasn't going to play anymore and I decided really strictly not to perform at all. And uh, I, I didn't like the idea of keeping this music doing nothing. This way, it, it may help 
some young person. Young people are individualists, and you must leave them free. But freedom should be used to good effect. That applied particularly to one graduate of the Institute who came back with his band leader Kenny Ball to play for us, Martin Lytton. Ball and his jazzmen playing a number which he wrote specially for highway. One of the best things about being on the highway is the people I come across. In Colchester, I found myself being guided most elegantly by an old friend of mine, Karen Kay. Okay. Well, you have plenty of countryside around here too, haven't you? I love it. I, I, I probably know Colchester. I mean, the town is very pretty, but I probably know the surrounding area better than the people who, who actually have been here all their lives, you know? Because <laughs> you do tend to do that, don't you? You explore the place. Now, it seems to me that Cottage is a town of contrast, is that right? Yes, absolutely. I, I think, really, they've managed to combine the old and the new quite well, really. I mean, this is the old Roman wall, yeah. 2,000 years old. Is it? And that's the modern car park, five minutes old. <laughs> <laughs> that's built on the, on, the, on the lines of a Roman mm. palace, is it? Yes, I think so. It's rather nice, really, the way they've done that, because Colchester needed it desperately, really did. Well, it'll stand but, as long as this has stood there. I shouldn't think so, no. Mm. I think that we've got to get used to change, haven't we, really? We've got to... I don't think we've got any options. As long as they, they, they combine the old and the new with a little bit of taste, and it's not an eyesore. Now, good heavens, what's that? That's Colchester's water supply, that is. Is it? That's Jumbo, yes. You know when you're in Colchester, you know when you're arriving in Colchester on the train, you see, because that's, that's a great, great landmark. 